Hey, what is up guys, Sam here, and welcome back to episode 3 of the bot coding tutorial series. This coding series is brought to you by Salad. Salad is an easy to use application that allows you to earn money while you're not using your computer. Salad uses your computer's graphics card to mine cryptocurrency and allows you to redeem rewards such as Discord Nitro, Visa gift cards, Amazon gift cards, and so much more. Salad is an official Discord partner with a Discord server of over 40,000 members. With almost 900,000 people already using Salad, why not sign up today? Use code TDE2 for two times your earnings for a limited time only. Thank you to Salad for sponsoring this series. So in this episode, we're going to be adding a command handler, which is a bit different than the last series, as obviously now we're using slash commands, but it's similar enough in principle. We just have to do a few different changes. So basically the command handler will replace us having if name equals hello and if name equals say hello, all this stuff down here would all just be automatic done by the bot. So. We're going to begin by making a commands folder. And this is now where we put all of our commands. So next thing we're going to do is make something called slash register.js. And basically what we're going to put in here is registering our slash commands. So I'm actually going to quickly bring up the Discord JS guide. And what you'll see in here is registering slash commands. So there's no point really in writing all this out because you won't really need to understand it. It is more just that this will load in your commands. So we're gonna copy this and paste it into here. Now there is a few changes we need to make. Uh, firstly, we'll actually need to head back here. We're actually gonna be using the global commands section here instead of the guild commands as this will be affected for every single server the bot's in. So we're gonna copy this and uh, change that part of the code out in here. So there it is. So we're just gonna replace this with that. And now that should work for us. So the next step is we'll need to install these up here. So we need to install discord.js-rest and API types. So we're gonna open our terminal, new terminal, and npm i. And what you can actually do is just copy these. And then for this one, you wanna make sure you don't copy the slash v9. You just wanna copy the discord API types. And then they should install both of them at the same time. Just put a space between them. And there we go. So now we have everything we need. So what we'll actually do to make this easier is we have as it sees, it's trying to load in a token here from a config file. So we'll actually make that config file, config.js. And we're going to do something called module.exports. And basically that means whatever, whenever you load in this file, what, it, what data it gives out. So basically if I put like name test in here, and then I call the file in here like this, if I, if I call the name, that is now equal to the word test, since we're calling the name property of the config file. And this is showing that it's an object, and this is the name property. So we're calling it, that's, this is what we get out of it then. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll change this back to token. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put our token into here. And there we go. So now that our token is in here, we're gonna go back to this file and we're gonna load in the token. So we can take it from here just as it is. And then we can replace this whole thing down here with just token. So now our bot will log in using the token from the config file, and that means that we won't need to update it in two different places if it ever changes or anything. So the next thing that we need here is our client ID, and the easiest way to get that is to go over to Discord, go to user settings, and then you wanna head to advanced and turn on developer mode. And then what you can do is right click your bot and press copy ID. Then you can head back to here and fill that in. Guild ID we no longer need because we're using global commands, not just for one specific server, so that's fine. Uh, as you can see here, it's already set up the files, the commands folder for us. So it's actually loading in all the commands here. And then down here, it's doing for every file in that folder that it's gotten from up here. We're going to require that file. So as I've said, requiring it basically would get whatever data is passed through the export. So in this case, it would be an object, but obviously it would be a, an actual function in the commands it would do something. And it's pushing it to a commands list. So it will an array of commands. So it's basically listing out all the commands that we have into here. So then that means later on we can say, uh, do we have this command? Is it a legit command? Yes or no? And then run it if it is and leave it if it isn't. So the next thing it's doing is it's making a new REST uh, connection with Discord. Basically, REST you don't need to worry too much about. Again, you won't ever really need to pass this point. This is the first time I've ever had to use it with slash commands. It's basically just REST just means you're contacting Discord's API directly. So you're not, it's basically what Discord.js does, except Discord.js covers it up with different things like bot.login is actually just a REST API call, but we don't need to worry about it anyway. So basically you're just setting your token in here, you're registering the API, 
and what it's doing then is it's uh, just logging out to the console and it's running the rest script which basically stores all of the commands that you've just inserted as you can see body commands body is just the um, basically the description of what what data it's giving so what it's doing is it's basically you can read it off as API is putting our application commands from with from our bots ID and it's giving a list of commands and then it's saying successfully done the async part up here is basically just so you can use await and await means basically that between these two it will run this it will wait for this to be done and then it will say success so if you didn't have the async it would just run it wouldn't wait for this and it would just say success instantly so that basically just allows it to pause the code while it's running so what we need to do now is head back to our index.js and we'll need to do something like this require slash register so require dot slash slash register and basically now what that will do is whenever the bot starts up it will require this which means it will run whatever code is in here so we're actually going to turn this into a module dot exports and we're going to make this a function so as we did with the ready event back here this is just a function it's something that will run when something happens so this function is going to run whenever the file is called so we're going to just basically copy this and paste it into here so we got an error here and that's one thing I didn't notice is we have to change this to JS instead of JSON so where it says uh, require just change this to JS instead of JSON the module that exports here is basically giving back a function so what we have to do is we have to call that function by putting two brackets on the outside of it. So it's like calling the require up here. You put a bracket and whatever you need to pass in. We don't need to give any information here. We're just calling the function directly. So require slash register and that just runs the function that it's giving us then. So then if we turn the bot on, we'll see started refreshing application commands, successfully reloaded application commands, the bot is online. So what we can do now is give it a command. So we're going to call it, uh, say, ping.js. And what we're going to do is const slash slash command builder equals require this at discord js slash builders so basically now this is giving us a way to make our commands easier so next we type module.exports.data equals new slash command builder and what we can do now is set the options so set name to ping set description to ping the user and then that's all we really need for now so we can end it there so next what we can do is we can do module.exports.run equals and we'll just get a bot and an interaction in here the interaction will be the command and what we can do then is just for example interaction.reply content hello so it's just the same way we did it before except now it's uh oops not there not there so it's basically the same way we did it before, the interaction.reply, except it's through the run method of this single command here. So what we can do now is if we turn the bot on, we will see starting refresh of application commands, it found the ping command, and successfully reloaded. So now if we head over to Discord, slash ping, we can see ping is there. And right now it won't do anything when we run it because we haven't linked it up yet to that run method. But what we have done now is create the way that the commands are recognized and loaded in. So the next step is to head on over to back to the main file and we can remove this commands.create now. We won't need this anymore. And now all we really have to do is we have our uh, interaction create. So we can leave this, we can leave name, we can leave options. What we want to do basically is now link up this run method so what we need to do now is we're back in this file here the slash register which is basically the way we're loading in all of our commands and we're going to want to make a command list so command list equals and we're going to use a new map the new keyword just means to make a fresh map and a map is basically an object so you can do map.get map.get name and that would basically return whatever the name is equal to. So if I had name equals Sam, it would return Sam if I do map.getName. So basically, it's a useful way of having our command. So let's say the ping command, and that would equal the run method. So we'd have it so whenever we, we can basically say 
does ping exist? And if it does, run whatever it's linked to in the object. So I'll show you a quick demonstration of that here. So we're going to go down to this section. We're going to do command list dot set. And we're going to set the command dot data dot name to command dot run. So the data dot name is this uh, here, set name to ping. So that's going to be basically setting the word ping equal to command dot run. And command dot run is this method here. So we can head back now and basically we can just link it up to this method here. And now every time we call, we get the name, it will return the method. So I'll, I'll show you how that works now. So we're going to change this down here to command list because now we want the full list of commands given to us in the map format. And we're going to remove this ping up here because that will layer out. And we'll head over here. So what we'll do here now is basically let command method equal commands dot get name. So it's basically going to look for that ping word. If it was the ping command here, it's going to look for the word ping and if it's linked to any method. And if it's not, that means the command is invalid. So we're going to return. Otherwise, we're going to run the command method and we're going to pass in the bot and the interaction. So basically we're giving this file has no idea of the bot. It has no idea of the interaction as the interaction is in here anyway. So basically we have to pass in the bot so it can do things with the bot's application and we have to pass in the interaction as otherwise it wouldn't know what command was being run. We're actually going to add in something here because right now our slash register, this is running every time we restart. So what we want to do is add a thing in here, update commands. And what we're going to do is if update commands, then we want to update our commands. So we only need to update our commands if we've changed something about the actual name or options of the command. If we change anything in here, we don't need to rerun it. But if we change any of these details, we will need to rerun our slash register event. So right now we don't need to pass anything in because we don't want our commands to update every single time we restart. Because what could happen is the slash commands could take up to an hour to actually sync. And then you're stuck trying to test it and your commands aren't working. So basically make sure you have an update commands. Um, property in here or argument in here and then if update commands run this okay so the next thing we need to add is we need to add a defer reply in here because now what we're doing is we're passing it into a command method which takes more time basically after a slash command you have exactly three seconds to respond and we can't guarantee the command will be run within three seconds so we're going to do we need to actually make this async which means we can, as I said earlier, which means we can pause the code. So we're going to do await interaction dot defer reply. What this will do now is it will wait for the interaction to be deferred. So it will say uh, the bot is thinking or something, and that will leave it as it's waiting for a reply. Then we can run the command method. And inside of here, we actually want to change this to edit reply. Since what happens is this here is counted. Uh, defer reply is counted as a reply. So we basically in here in your commands, you'll need to do edit reply. So if we try this out now, we can do slash ping. See tutorial is thinking really quick and then instantly hello. So there we've made our first command in our command handler. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, let me know how your code went. Let me know if you're enjoying the series so far. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.